Have you ever wondered what the Apostle Paul meant when he warned about savage wolves infiltrating the church? Welcome to Crying Stones Ministries on this beautiful Monday. I'm delighted to have you join us for today's engaging Bible lesson. We're a community passionate about diving deep into God's Word, and it's a joy to share this journey with you. If you're finding value in our studies, please show your support by hitting the like button, subscribing to our channel, and sharing your thoughts by leaving a comment below. Your engagement helps us grow and reach others seeking guidance and inspiration from the Bible. As we begin, let's unite ourselves in prayer. Dear Heavenly Father, we approach your throne of grace humbly seeking the wisdom you have graciously embedded within your word. We ask for your guidance as we navigate these profound truths and pray that you fortify our understanding enabling us to apply your teachings to our lives, shield us from any form of deception and guide us along your path of righteousness. We pray this in the mighty name of Jesus, Amen. Today we delve into Acts 20:27, 20, 32, a sobering message from the Apostle Paul. This passage presents a stark warning that remains relevant to us, even in our modern context. In Acts 20, Paul issues a stark warning to the church leaders from Ephesus about an impending apostasy. This passage is a powerful reminder of the Apostle Paul's deep concern for the purity of the church and its ability to persevere amidst both internal and external threats. Paul uses the metaphor of savage wolves to describe the fierce persecution and false teachings that would infiltrate the church from within. The image is vivid and unsettling, conjuring up a sense of danger and urgency. When we think of wolves we often imagine creatures that are cunning and relentless in their pursuit. They are not known to spare their prey, and this is precisely the kind of threat Paul warns the church about. But who are these wolves? Paul clarifies that they will emerge from within the church itself. He predicts, Also of your own selves shall men arise speaking perverse things to draw away disciples after them. This prophecy is a stark reminder that threats to the faith can come from within, even from those who were once part of the same flock. This prediction came to pass in the form of heretical teachings and the introduction of pagan practices into Christian worship as early as the 4th and 5th centuries. This shift from divine truths marks a significant departure leading to a blend of Christian and pagan elements. For instance, certain pagan rituals, symbols and festivals were incorporated into Christian worship, leading to a form of Christianity that was far removed from its original teachings. This was not a sudden shift, but a gradual one. It was a subtle transformation that took place over centuries making it all the more dangerous. It's like the proverbial frog in the pot of slowly boiling water, unaware of its impending doom. The danger is most potent when it's least obvious. But why would such a shift occur within the church? One reason could be the desire for mission advancement. By incorporating familiar elements from pagan religions, the church might have hoped to attract more followers. But in doing so, they risked diluting the purity of the Christian faith. Another reason could be the influence of powerful individuals or groups within the church who had their own interpretations of the scriptures. These interpretations often veered away from the original teachings of the Bible leading to the rise of heretical doctrines. This historical shift from divine truths marks a significant departure, leading to a blend of Christian and pagan elements. As we delve deeper into our Bible study, let's remember the importance of remaining vigilant against such threats to our faith. The purity of the Christian faith is worth preserving, and it's our responsibility to guard it against compromise. In our next segment we'll explore the mystery of lawlessness that Paul talks about in 2 Thessalonians. But for now let's reflect on the sobering message from Acts 20. Remember, the truth of God's word is our greatest defense against the savage wolves of false teachings. Paul further elaborates on this issue in 2 Thessalonians 2, 7, 12. Here he speaks of the mystery of lawlessness that was already at work during his time. This mystery was essentially a cryptic way of referring to a gradual departure from God's truth, particularly concerning obedience to his law. Paul, with his discerning eye, could see the seeds of apostasy being sown in the hearts of people, subtly yet steadily. This was not a sudden abrupt shift, but a slow, almost imperceptible drift away from the foundation of God's word. This drift was not just a matter of people's actions but more significantly, it was a shift in their beliefs and attitudes. The Apostle Paul was deeply concerned about this. He knew from his own journey how easy it was to stray from the path of righteousness. He understood the destructive power of deception, and he was determined to warn the church about the dangers of this mystery of lawlessness. So, what were the consequences of this departure from God's truth? The impact was far-reaching affecting not just individuals but the entire church 
the purity of the gospel was diluted with human ideas and philosophies, leading to a blend of Christian and pagan elements. This blending was further compounded by compromises made for the sake of mission advancement. The implications of this are evident in the religious practices of the time. Early Christians began to adopt pagan traditions and incorporate them into their worship. This was not a matter of mere cultural exchange, it was a significant departure from the teachings of Jesus and the Apostles. One of the most notable examples of this blending was the adoption of Sunday as the day of worship. In the Roman world Sunday was a day dedicated to the sun god. By adopting this day the church was unknowingly aligning itself with pagan practices. This was not just a matter of changing the day of worship, it was a shift in the church's identity, a compromise of its core beliefs. This departure from God's truth didn't stop there. The church began to embrace idol worship, another practice deeply rooted in pagan religions. This was a stark contrast to the teachings of the Bible, which explicitly prohibits idolatry. The adoption of Sunday, a day dedicated to the sun god and pagan religions as the Christian day of worship is a prime example of these compromises. This shift in practices was a clear manifestation of the mystery of lawlessness that Paul warned about. It was a sobering reminder of how easy it is to drift away from the truth and how vigilant we must be to guard our faith. This historical context leads us to reflect on our current state. As we navigate through the 21st century we must pause and reflect upon the state of our faith and our churches. Are we witnessing a similar trend that Paul warned the Ephesian church leaders about centuries ago? Are there savage wolves among us, distorting the divine truth and leading us astray? Let's take a moment to consider the compromises that might be entering our churches today. In our quest for modernity and inclusivity, are we inadvertently diluting the purity of God's word? Are we allowing cultural norms and societal pressures to shape our practices and beliefs instead of letting God's word be our compass? We live in a world that often encourages compromise for convenience or acceptance. In such a world it's easy for us to lose sight of God's unchanging truths amidst the ever-changing tides of societal norms. We might find ourselves bending the word to fit our lives rather than molding our lives to fit the word. For instance, are we prioritizing our comfort over our commitment to God? Are we allowing worldly pleasures to overshadow our spiritual growth? Are we choosing to follow popular opinion rather than the divine instruction laid out in the scriptures? Moreover, are we, perhaps unknowingly, blending truth with error? This is a subtle yet dangerous path. It's like mixing a drop of poison with a glass of pure water, it taints the entire glass. Similarly, even a small compromise on God's truth can lead us astray, diluting the purity and integrity of our faith. It's crucial for us to critically examine our beliefs and practices. We must constantly check our spiritual compass, ensuring it's aligned with God's word. We need to be like the Bereans from Acts 17:11, who were commended for examining the scriptures daily to see if what they heard was true. Let's remember the words of Paul in 1 Thessalonians 5:21: Test everything, hold on to what is good. We must discern the difference between the wheat and the chaff, the truth and the deception. We must hold fast to what is good, pure and true, and discard what isn't. In this journey of faith, let's commit to seeking God's guidance. He is our ultimate source of wisdom and truth. Let's ask Him to open our eyes, so we might discern truth from deception, and to strengthen our hearts, so we might stand firm amidst trials and temptations. As we navigate through this world it's crucial for us to remain vigilant in upholding the purity of our faith. Let's remember Paul's warning and strive to keep our faith untainted by the world. Let's commit to seeking, following and upholding God's truth, no matter the cost. May we, like Paul, run our race with perseverance keeping our eyes fixed on Jesus the author and perfecter of our faith. As we ponder these questions we must commit to seeking God's guidance. We live in a world where truth and falsehood often intertwine, where lines blur and compromise is frequently offered as an easy path. However, as believers and followers of Christ, we are called to a higher standard. We are called to discernment, to sift through the noise and hold fast to God's unchanging truth. Our faith journey isn't meant to be a passive one. It requires active engagement, a willingness to question, to search, to knock on the door of understanding. It requires us to be like the Bereans, who upon hearing the teachings of Paul, didn't just accept them blindly, but examined the scriptures every day to see if what Paul said was true. And so we too should examine the scriptures comparing what we hear, what we are taught, with the infallible word of God. Our beliefs, our practices, our worship, should they not align with the biblical truth? 
must be questioned and corrected. We must guard against the subtle infiltration of false teachings, of practices that veer us away from the purity of our faith. This is not a journey we undertake alone. We have the Holy Spirit, our helper, our guide, who leads us into all truth. It is through prayer, through seeking God's face, that we gain wisdom and understanding. It is through His Word that we anchor our faith, ensuring that we are not swayed by every wind of doctrine by the cunning and craftiness of man. Let's take this call to action to heart. Let's commit to being vigilant watchmen, standing firm in our faith, discerning truth from deception, and ensuring that our faith remains anchored in God's Word alone. Thank you for joining us today. Your presence, your engagement, your willingness to dive deep into God's Word is what makes this community special. We hope that today's study has stirred in you a desire to stand firm in your faith, to be vigilant against compromise. We look forward to our next study together. Until then, may God's grace and peace be with you, guiding you in His truth.